Hi guys, hope you're doing fine. Today we are at my ordinary work in the IT industry and I did set up a three-point lighting setup for corporate headshots behind me. And it's Sunday and it's completely empty here, so I don't have any model with me, but I'm going to try to explain to you as thoroughly as possible how I take these kinds of images so that you can replicate it on your own. One of the first things that we need to address is controlling the surrounding light. And in this case, we have two different light sources with two different color temperatures. We have the daylight outside and we also have the ceiling light. And I don't want any of those light sources to be present in the image. The lights in the ceiling has uh, 2700 Kelvin in color temperature and the daylight is around 5,500 or something like that. And the flashes or the strobes that we're using is around 5,500. And that is why I actually did turn down the blinds to the right to control the daylight that's coming in from the right. And I also did turn off all the possible ceiling lights that I could turn off. I wasn't able to turn off everything because of the emergency exit needing this. But this is as far as we're going to go regarding co controlling the surrounding light. I am going to place the subject here. I'm using a main light and I'm also using two rim lights in the back of the subject to separate it from the background. The main light is a one meter softbox aimed towards the subject but also a bit in front of the subject towards the reflector that I have here. The reflector is aimed with its white side towards the subject instead of using the silver side that this reflector has because I want the effect to be a bit more subtle. The reflector is easing up the shadows in the face, giving the model a more flattering look. In the background we have these two rim lights and the rim lights are aimed towards the subject and they are there because I want them to separate the subject from the background. So they are going to create white or light rim lights on the edges of the subject. Also, I am using grids on the rim lights. And the main reason that I'm using that is that I don't want flare in the lens. And sometimes when you don't have these grids on, the light from the rim light can actually shine in through the lens and create flare. And that creates a lack of contrast. The height of the main light is usually adjusted depending on the height of the model. In this case, it's approximately at eye level. And I do this because I want the catch light to be in the upper part of the eye. And I also want the shadow under the nose not touching the upper part of the lip. You could opt out. You don't need the reflector if you don't want to. That would give you a bit more shadows under the chin. And for some people that might be preferable. So regarding the gear that I'm using here, I'm using Ellen Chrome soft boxes with a grid. I'm also using an Ellen Chrome ELB 500 TTL uh, for both strobes in the background. It is currently set to 1.3 on both heads. As a main light, I told you I was using a one meter soft box and it's also from Ellen Chrome and I'm using the Ellen Chrome 1 set to 0.3 in power at the moment. So I'm going to take a few images here and I'm going to show you how the light looks without using the rim lights and also how it looks without using the main light. So let's take an image with the rim lights on and the main light on first. Now I'm going to turn off the rim lights and this is the kind of image that we get when we do that. And this is an image using only the rim lights. Using no lights at all, except for the modeling light in the Ellen Chrome 1 that I use as a main light, would look like this. So what we're using to shoot the images is a Sony a7 IV. I actually did order the Sony a7R5, but I haven't received it yet. So it's going to be really fun to try it out when I get it. The lens is a Sigma 85 1.4 and I have it set to 1.4 when I'm shooting because I want to separate the subject from the background and create a blurry effect in the background. The shutter speed is set to 1 over 320 and I have the ISO set to 100. I, I do need a trigger that supports high speed sync so I'm using a Skyport HS I think it's called from Ellen Chrome attached to, to the camera and with that I'm able to wirelessly control my, my flashes. So to be able to take images, in this case, I won't be able to run back and forth to the camera. So I'm using a Bluetooth uh, remote from Sony. It's called RMT P1BT. 
So that's actually all for today. And I hope you like this content. It was a bit unstructured this time, but maybe it has some parts in it that you can actually use to be able to replicate this on your own. In the future, I will create more content like this. I will probably do a better shot list and be a bit more structured in the future. But since this is my third YouTube video, you're gonna have to live with it this time. I'm really, really grateful that you're watching. And I do understand that there are probably tons of questions regarding this setup or maybe even other lighting setups. So if you comment down below, I'm gonna be as quick and thorough as possible to do my best to answer your questions so that you also can do things like this when you are out on corporate headshots or taking portraits of friend families or models. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Have a nice day.